Hi, everybody. We're glad that you can hear us now. It's an important part of what we're doing today because we want you to be able to understand all the great information that's coming out with water and the Central Valley. And what we were explaining is today we're talking about water and the water energy nexus and agricultural technology and how those all go together and Fresno State's role in it. And part of the thing that we're really trying to push is the blue tech valley. So you think Bay Area, Silicon Valley, you know it's all about tech. When you think Central California, think Blue Tech Valley and think it's all about water technology and energy and agriculture and how those all go together. And that's what Fresno State's really focusing on and Fresno State is becoming that water campus. And that goes to the heart of the California State University System mission. We do tangible research for real world issues and there's no bigger issue facing Central California than water. And so Fresno State is the perfect place to be housing all of these programs to be looking into research, policy, and supporting entrepreneurs to solve some of these issues. So we're going to talk about Fresno State's role in all of that, why we're the Blue Tech Valley and the Valley Ventures program today. And to do that, we have Heather Peterson, who is the program manager for the WET Center. And we also have Benjamin Francis, who is the project coordinator for Valley Ventures. So thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna talk about Valley Ventures and the programs, and if you have a great idea, how you can support that, bring it to market. First, we're gonna talk about Blue Tech Valley and all the exciting, innovative work that is going on in the Central Valley today. So tell us, what is Blue Tech Valley? So the Blue Tech Valley is actually an initiative that started back in 2011. First of state and a couple of other organizations and industry leaders from this area got together and thought about how can we really brand this area for as being the hotspot for commercialization of water, energy, and ag tech. Because this is really where it happens, where the rubber meets the road. If you have an idea, but you need to get it out to the field or in to a pilot, this is really where you can do it. So how do we brand this area? And that was why we used the Blue Tech Valley as kind of a marketing vehicle to get that message out. And it resonated very well with people locally, but also regionally, even nationally, that it makes sense that this should be the hotbed for water energy and access Absolutely. commercialization. So in 2016, we were able to secure a grant from the California Energy Commission. They had this vision of creating regional energy clusters uh, around California and really focusing on how can we get technologies uh, out to the marketplace that would eventually benefit the California way there, which is all of us. Mm -hmm. So, um, and they were very focused on as well that they wanted to make it uh, address some issues that were pertinent to that specific region. So with us, of course, there will be a strong focus on egg and water in that energy. In its point. And that's exciting because that means it could be saving people money, right? It can, yeah. definitely. And that is the idea to get more reliable energy, useless, and every time you use water, you use energy as well. So that's where the saving comes in with that water energy nexus. Um, so they were able, they put together four clusters. There's one in LA, one in the Bay Area, one in San Diego, and then the rest is really moved into the Blue Tech Valley, which covers 38 counties. Wow. <laughs> so it's a five-year project, and, and it's really to take entrepreneurs at different levels. Either they have an idea, they have started, they might have an actually business already, but how can we move them all forward and, and provide those resources that's needed for them to do so? Right. And that's exciting because it's not just thinking that the universities and the those people have all the answers, but that there's other people out there that are having business ideas that can really make a difference. Definitely. It's from everyone from a researcher at a university that want to transfer and commercialize the technology they're working on. But it can also be someone who's working in the garage, which is always the example people take up. But it can be anybody really that has a great idea. And then we, we are the ones that would help them evaluate it and, and see what kind of route should they take to move this forward. So we're one of four We clusters. are one of four clusters and we're definitely the largest one by geography because yeah. we cover such a big area. So we're one of four clusters. What they also did with that energy grant that was very innovative is that they put aside a good amount of money for funding as well. Mm -hmm. So that's run by another organization called CalCIF and the grant is called a CalC grant. Mm -hmm. So they will offer entrepreneurs up to $150,000 in grant money. So it's under the you don't have to pay it back, it's just something you get wow. from them. Um, and that is really meant for entrepreneurs that has a very early stage product they prior to prototype are just around there and they can apply for this one to move it forward 
and um, so that's very interesting. That's huge because it's so hard. So many people have a great idea, and it's hard to find that funding. It is and very it's, difficult. It's the state that's supporting it. That or? is the yeah. That is the Cali that is the state of California from the Energy Commission. Right. So yeah, because it is as you mentioned. Once you've asked your friends and your family, <laughs> and you kind of put them all in your house and all that, wherever you find them, it's really difficult to get investment. You can't get a bank loan. It's so it's really money that falls in a very good spot to help these entrepreneurs. And um, and they will send out uh, solicitations when it's time to apply. It's a fairly simple application. And um, what they have, they have tried to really make sure that the Central Valley um, gets its fair share of those dollars. Mm -hmm. So if um, so that you can only apply a certain amount of companies from each region to make it fair. So we have actually seen quite a few companies from the Valley that have been able to exit some of those funds. Nice. And then, so there's the four clusters, mm -hmm. but then with Blue Tech Valley, there's different hubs as well. Yes. So um, because we cover such a large area, we want to make sure we get out to each community to be able to provide the entrepreneurs the resources they need, uh, no matter where they're from in our 38 counties. So we've created this hub and spoke model. So the hub is Fresno State. This is where the the hardens of the of the program, if you will, but then we work together with five other CSUs um, to create this hub and spoke model. So we work with Humboldt, Sacramento State, Chico, um, Monterey, Bakersfield, and then a small business development center in Truckee. So they will all cover their own area, reach out to entrepreneurs, get them into our system. We don't intend to make them all come to Fresno and do everything here and extract them here. We want them to grow and be sustainable and successful in their own community, mm -hmm. but we would like to provide them with the resources so they can do so. Nice. And then part of that is you're leading yeah. webinars and getting people involved. Yes, we are doing a lot of things online webinars and we will be doing them a lot of Zoom meetings and we can do everything online basically. We have a couple of programs that are key that we'll have in Fresno. But we are looking at how can we expand that and doing it maybe in Northern California and Southern California to kind of see, to make sure we also accommodate the entrepreneurs that, that are in those areas. So what are some of the exciting projects that are already underway or what are you seeing already? In terms of technology, well, we see a lot of different things. Of course, we see a lot that re relates to water. And right now, there's a lot of um, data-driven technologies for egg and how can you be more um, take better use and manage your resources a lot better. So we see some of those, we see storage, how can you better store energy from um, solar or wind and, and, and finding better models to do that. Nice. Yeah. So people across California are coming up with these ideas and we're supporting those being developed. It's definitely, yeah. So it's interesting, it's fun to see all these different technologies and figure out how they can fit and, and supporting them and see them grow and successful yeah it's pretty exciting tell us about the wet centers role in all of that so the wet center the water energy and technology center is a, a center here at Fresno State it's also a physical building that houses uh, six offices for companies mm -hmm. that they can live in and work in and um, preferably at one point grow out of because yeah. they're getting too successful <laughs> um, there's also a lab there that can test different kind of uh, water technologies as well Nice. What we were able to do with this funding also is actually to build what we call Wet North. So that's a building to the north of the Wet Center where we have that we've renovated and added an additional six offices and also a plug and clip space. So we, because we've seen through the years that a lot of companies and entrepreneurs come from outside the area because they realize this is really where they need right. to keep the business, but they might not be able to make that move yet. So we'll come here and they'll work out of the wet center for a day or two a month and meet with people and meet with like-minded entrepreneurs, finding customers, and then eventually they will need an office and, and, and go from here. So That's pretty cool that Fresno State is offering space for these companies and the ideas that you have, supporting them, coming together, working with other like-minded people, and taking it to the next level by having those resources, right? It is very neat and it's very nice for, it's a great opportunity for students as well because they're always asking us, do you know anyone, can we get anyone, we need someone with these um, with graduate student or interns. So we really think that's a great value for mm -hmm. Fresno State to have these companies on site that are growing their right. business and we've seen quite a few of them that then end up, you know, they have one person, get two persons, suddenly they move their headquarters. 
the end of our moves here. So just creating that, yeah. you know, growth of companies, I think, is something that's really very powerful. That's industry. huge for local economy, bringing those industries, those businesses here. And then it also supports our students. So if we are the premier water campus, if the heart of technology and innovation is happening here, that's great experience for our students who are the Valley's future leaders to have that. It really is, definitely. Yeah, so we encourage all the students to, that are interested in that to come and talk with us and meet some of the companies and see if we can make that connection and also right. greater students when they're done. And that might be some good opportunities for them as well. Right, so they, the businesses help the local economy, plus they provide jobs yes. for our graduates, and we're helping the community by having those graduates who are ready, who've learned about this, who are ready to fill that need in the Valley, that have learned about innovation and technology and ag and water. Definitely. And also trying to solve some of the issues that, that mm -hmm. are here as well at the same time. So yeah. That's a big task. It is. It's very big. <laughs> yeah. But we, we try to do our part of it and, and, and yeah, that's interesting. Absolutely. Exciting. So tell us about, there's an incubator with the Wet Center. You touched on that a little bit about the offices and that's the support for it. Yes. So the companies that are there, um, some of them, they're all to the point where they are making some revenue. And um, so the incubation is just helping them further that growth in their business and helping them with the resources they need to do. So a lot of them are looking for good connections. They might be looking for faculty. That we have all these resources that we can connect you to either yeah. faculty, research students, but also we have a huge farm surrounding Fresno State campus that is really a microcosm of the Central Valley. So taking advantage of, of getting, can you get your technology out there and get it tested or showcase that is really a lot of value um, to the to the to the companies right yeah. and also we have a dairy we have had a company out there that has been treating the manure and now we have a couple of other companies that are working directly more on the on the per, um, part right. of the dairy we have a winery if you need to do things to treat wastewater from the winery so we just have all these yeah. resources right here on the campus that right. you can't really you can't duplicate it anywhere because right. we have that whole ecosystem set up to help these yeah. entrepreneurs with all the assets. We always call it the farm laboratory. Yes. But listening to you talk about it, it makes a lot more sense about it's really a lab. It's really that microcosm where you can test out your ideas in all the different areas of ag industry with support. Definitely. Because you might have the greatest idea that you develop out of Stanford and it's really high tech and it's amazing and you can test it up there in a lab but if you need to move it up to a real life situation you need to be here you need to do it right here where the problems are and where you can get it in a live in a farm that's actually commercial size so you can weed out some of these issues that you might have want to actually sell it to a real customer okay. so i think being that the university the, the system we set us just really being this is where you apply mm -hmm. your research and your yeah. technology before you move it that's really yeah. cool. I think this is a perfect transition to bring in Benjamin for Valley Ventures and the conversation there because we talked about the Wet Center has the incubator and then with Valley Ventures we have the accelerator. So tell us about that. So the Valley Ventures accelerator is I guess complementary to all the uh, activities we have going on at the Wet Center. So that's a that's a cohort based program so it runs about three to four months. Um, all programmed to focus on sales and raising venture capital for these ag tech companies, water tech companies, and tech and that's what people want to hear. If they have an idea, they want to hear sales, right? Exactly. <laughs> so you're making them viable. Exactly. And, and typically they kind of go through the, the life cycle of uh, coming through Blue Tech Valley, the technical testing, working on the farm. And then eventually once it gets to the point to where they want to accelerate their sales, maybe they have a few customers already. Maybe they're ready to begin pre-sales, whatever it may be. Uh, we, we want them to turn to Valley Ventures to help them um, accelerate that process. If they need to raise funding, let's help you do that. So that's kind of the, the goal of the program. There. It's really cool because how many people sitting at home have this great idea? They think, but how do you move forward with it? And you're actually helping those people who've never been an entrepreneur before, some who have, get to that next step and actually get the training that they need to be able to take the products to market and be exactly. successful. And, and in the program, we, we have workshops. And in these workshops, we bring in a lot of experts within areas of sales. So maybe they're um, trained in, in different aspects, such as marketing, uh, maybe enterprise sales specifically. And then in addition, our guest speakers include uh, you know, various entrepreneurs that may have sold companies and spend that kind of close relationship with these uh, entrepreneurs.
entrepreneurs in our program, I'm helping them grow and sell. And in addition, we really tap into our industry resources to connect them uh, with potential customers. So we'll do customer interviews inside of our workshops. Uh, distributors will come in and talk about what they look for in products and what they what they look to sell. And then, uh, you know, outside of that, we'll we'll take uh, our companies on tours. We just did tour of the wonderful facility uh, a few months ago. So we, we really want to connect them to the industry beyond just train them in sales as well. So tell us about some of the coolest products and businesses that have come out and kind of take us through the process, how you help them specifically in the different areas. Sure. So, you know, as far as the range of products, we have everything from soil moisture sensors to, of course, the data driven, um, I guess, software programs for farmers that help to kind of optimize uh, for yield or cutting costs, saving water, whatever it might be. Um, some of the more unique products include a, a company that uh, basically quote unquote manufactures crickets for an alternative uh, protein source. Uh, they sell that for pet food, so that's kind of a, they, they optimize water flow, creating protein there, yeah. uh, or water usage, sorry, in the, in the process of generating protein. Uh, we have other ones uh, that have their drones that stay in the, the air for 30 weeks at a time. Wow. Um, I, I a drone in the air on. for 30 weeks? Yeah, it's got a, it's got a tethered cord and um, it's been used in, in ag capacities. It's also been used um, in international uses around the world for documenting uh, various events. So instead of having a, a, a helicopter or something like that, right. you have a helicopter in your backpack. So um, a lot of really cool technologies come through. Um, two examples of, of companies that we've, we've worked with and uh, have done well since the program, uh, Groguru and Ecotumix. Uh, Groguru is a soil moisture sensor company, Ecotumix um, uh, treats, uh, treats water, just basically uh, treats with the pH levels through uh, carbon dioxide treatment. And, uh, you know, both of those companies came in there with some units in the ground, maybe a few sales, but really trying to learn more about how can they expand their sales, grow their team. Right. And, and through the workshops, we, we kind of worked with them on their marketing campaigns, their sales campaigns, bringing the right salespeople. Um, a lot of them made structural changes, uh, and then through the program at the very end, by taking what they learned and actually applying it, um, Grow Guru has, I, I think right now they do 100% revenue growth uh, month, uh, wow. quarter over quarter. <laughs> um, Eco2 Mix has grown over 1,000% and is on track to do 10 times of that by the end of the year. Um, and, and that all comes from changing from the, just a technical mindset to a sales mindset and truly providing mm -hmm. value to the customer. And, and we do that through kind of getting their foot in the door in the industry by providing. Why? How did they do that to be a part of Valley Ventures? So they can go to our website, valleyventures.org. Um, there's an application link on there, which you can apply. Um, basically, it's, it's open year round. So if you miss the deadline for uh, the spring cohort, you can always make it for the fall and vice versa as well. So. Um, we, we never shut off the application yeah. so they can apply at any time. All right, and we have some questions coming in. Again, we're live all the way till 1045, so keep those questions coming in. We have a question from our salon, Lodi asks, do you have angel or institutional investors if people don't have that um, funding already? Sure, uh, yeah, I mean, one of, one of the goals of Valley Ventures beyond just the sales is uh, helping raise capital. Now, our philosophy is an increase in sales will help you raise capital in the process. Um, so we, we talk heavily on that. But in addition, I mean, we, we bring in uh, local investors um, as well. The Central Angel Group is part of our, our program. And then uh, we also bring in investors, whether uh, virtually or in person uh, throughout the country that are focused on ag tech investing um, that kind of help with these early stage investments, uh, micro VC funds, maybe 10 million or so um, that, could, that speak with the companies. They get the companies get the chance to uh, speak with them within the workshops, kind of do a, an investor interview to understand their perspective. Um, so yes, we definitely aim to uh, kind of help bridge that gap of connection and also bridge that gap of understanding of what the investors are looking for. And it's so good for our economy to be yes. bringing these businesses that might be housed elsewhere, now they're going to be housed here and supporting our economy and offering jobs. Correct. And that's one thing the Valley Ventures program has done uh, pretty successfully so far is bringing companies, whether uh, across the country or even internationally, and uh, it's we've had more than a handful of founders move here full time and set up wow. their headquarters here in Fresno because they really appreciate the resources that Fresno State and other agencies provide for them. And then in addition, they realize that the Central Valley is an economic powerhouse when it comes to uh, their product and, and where they should be located and selling to. Right, right. If they're trying to sell an agricultural product, it makes sense to be in the Valley, right? Yeah. Awesome. We have another question that's came in. So let's look at that one. Pull that one up. Also, what was the characteristics of those companies in terms of maturity? Or do you need to have an MVP to get into the 
accelerator. So how far along, I guess, are the projects before they get accepted into the accelerator? So what we typically look for is um, some level of capability to execute sales. So that could be in the form of pre-sales. Uh, when, when a founder is going through the technical uh, development of their product, we want them, to, we've got other resources, other programs that can help them with that. We don't want them to get too distracted with uh, the sales process and developing that, especially since Valley Ventures is very focused on through the program, we want you to make sales. And we, we've seen companies make their first sale, we've seen companies make their first $100,000 worth of sales during the course of the three months. Um, and and that's, that's the goal of the program. And we don't want that to be uh, conflicting with the technical development process. So some level of MVP, some level of uh, maybe ability to execute on pre-sales uh, would be, I, I would say that would probably be my advice. Um, typically speaking, I'd say apply anyways. I mean, worst comes to worst. Uh, we pass you along to another resource that can help you with whatever stage you're at. Um, best case scenario is we have a conversation. We find out, hey, you're actually a good fit and uh, we, we bring you on board. So um, I would just encourage everyone to apply regardless. Yeah, that sounds really cool. And then you have a couple of key events with Valley Ventures Correct. as well. Tell us about those. So in addition to uh, the Ag Tech Day and the Central Valley Innovation Forum, uh, we also have our demo day uh, to where companies are able to pitch or uh, present in front of a booth to a, a group of industry people, um, entrepreneurs, investors, of course, um, and, and really just kind of get that publicity. We promote the companies through our various social media channels and our newsletter um, throughout the process. So those events are really aimed towards giving you exposure to customer groups, investors, or honestly, any other connection. You just never know um, what can come of them. We see that quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. One person they didn't expect uh, to meet at the event that would that drastically ended up helping their business. Um, wow. That happens a lot. That's really cool. Yeah. I mean, that's what everyone's looking for, right? And to be yeah. offering that and connecting people, that's that's a really cool event. It, it, it could come in the form of showing up there looking for investors and maybe have some conversations, but at the end of the day, you spoke with um, you spoke with the gentleman that connects you with a supplier that cuts your, cut your cost 50%. I mean, we've yeah. seen stuff like that happen, so. It's so cool that this is happening here. It seems, you know, common sense, but how many other areas don't have this? And so it's neat that you're bringing those resources together and connecting people so they can save costs, they can get that product out there that's actually gonna help us save energy, save money, save water, and it's all coming together. Yeah, that's exactly. Really cool. Nice. We have a follow-up question. Um, can you give any past examples in a previous cohort of how much money people have raised or is there a minimum or maximum that those investors are looking to invest? Or is it just open? So I'd say the range is pretty uh, pretty wide. I mean, typically speaking, uh, we'll have a few companies that come through that aren't looking to raise any money and they just want to kind of uh, bring their technologies to market and commercialize. And we don't, we don't, uh, we don't have any problem with that at this stage. Uh, we'll, we'll help them with their sales. Um, for the companies that are looking to raise money, typically speaking, minimum would be about $150,000. Uh, not every company does raise money. Uh, we help them the best we can, um, but not everyone does. Um, the ones that do, it can be $150,000. We've had other companies raise a few million dollars um, through the process. Now, those those ones, just because of the age of the program, um, they were a little more mature, a little further along. Uh, but Typically speaking, as, as we've had about eight months of, of uh, data since our last cohort finished, uh, we've seen companies do about, some of them do about three times or four times their previous round in size. Emilio actually asked, um, he asked, I think we kind of touched on this about funding providers being part of it. That's part, something that you might help with that. But is there an equity requirement for acceptance? At this stage, no. Um, Right now, cohort three, if, if you're interested in applying, this will be our last free cohort. So mm -hmm. I'd say uh, get it while you can while it's free. <laughs> um, but uh, after this stage, we'll, 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 we'll have discussions as far as where we'll go from here. But right. um, no equity as of right now, right. at least for cohort three. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense because you're obviously providing a real value to the companies that are part of it. So yeah, get involved while you can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell us more. What else do people need to know about Blue Tech Valley? You know, um, as there was one of the questions, what if you don't have a, a product that's ready for the accelerator program? We have a lot of other resources that we can help with. Mm -hmm. So you can apply to our website. It's bluetechvalley.org. And there's, I'm interested, just send a little quick email and we'll get you in uh, our system with our intake process, which is usually uh, what we call our Thai technology innovation evaluation. We'll discuss the product. We'll learn about it, see where they're at. And then from there, we, we put a 
plan together what are some of the steps that should be taken to move this product forward. One of the things that we launched this summer is our CEO crash course. So that's a three day, uh, July, August, September, full day where we do everything that a CEO should know. So we'll co cover accounting, legal, we have a full day on sales, marketing, HR, um, a couple of leaders that has built successful companies at Cominium as well. So we have other resources that are not necessarily the accelerator and the hope is that the companies will go do these things and they will work on their product, they work on their business and then they'll be ready to join the accelerator in one of their yeah. cohorts. That's a great point because you, know, you come into Valley Ventures, you join the accelerator, you have a good idea, all of a sudden it takes off. <laughs> yes. Suddenly you're a CEO going, oh, I have to manage HR and all these other issues I never had to think about before. Exactly, and especially if we see a lot of entrepreneurs that comes in from a technical background and that's what they've been living and breathing, mm -hmm. the, the, the product development and, and that type of thing, so they might need a little extra fun. Mm -hmm. But we have great partners as well throughout our region that we work with. Uh, we work with Berkeley, um, law school where they actually provide us free legal wow. help to entrepreneurs. Yeah. They'll come down here um, every month or every other month and do a live workshop and also do office hours, but they also do online hours. So if you have any questions about any legal aspects, they'll be able to help you with that. We're also collaborating with UC Davis. They have a huge business plan competition, so that will be a little bit earlier stage companies that will fit well in that. But there are specific prices for Central Valley companies and for energy-related companies. And I think last year they there was about a hundred thousand in prices. So it's definitely worth going after some of these other things as well that just those small steps you'll take to, to develop your business mm -hmm. and also they put out uh, and we'll put it on our website as well but a, a full uh, a lot of webinars during the fall that covers all kind of business related topics on how to start your business the pitch stick how to pitch to investors mm -hmm. finance all those things and it's webinars you can go up there if you want to join live but you can also look at your own time and uh, schedule online yeah yeah that, that's great to have the online option and you can view all those webinars and learn more stuff online. yes yeah and the good thing about that program is you don't need to uh, apply for the competition or anything like that to watch those webinars and be part of that um so that's just another great yeah. resources that so if you want to learn to more be inspired think about things yeah awesome a lot of resources out there Perfect. Benjamin, you look like you have something you wanted to add or anything well, you want to tell people. On the, on the CEO crash course, um, I think that that's another great resource that in the earlier stage companies, it doesn't matter whether you're late stage or early stage, those, those subjects are going to pertain to you. Um, and even if it's not uh, relevant at the time, it's good to have knowledge on those subjects in advance. Uh, we just launched that one as well. Um, and it's, a, it's pretty exciting to add that to our portfolio of programs to, to offer. It seems to kind of fill that bridge between um, peer product development and the Valley Ventures program. So um, that would be the other thing I'd add is if, if the Valley Ventures program is um, either too late of a stage or uh, maybe we want to have a discussion in the future on, on application or, or uh, applicability in the future, uh, the CEO crash course would probably be a good fit. At the very yeah, least. that'd be a good way to get you in. So it's 1036, we have about nine minutes left. So if you have any more questions, go ahead and send those in. We're going to ask those. For people who joined a little bit later, let's recap what Blue Tech Valley is and how we're trying to make Central California known as Blue Tech Valley. So when you think this area, you think water technology, you think water energy nexus, you think ag tech and how those all work together. Yeah, that is very true. There's a lot of um, opportunity in this region to commercialize water, energy, and ag technology. That's a, a full build-out ecosystem that can take care of entrepreneurs coming in at almost every stage with the technology development, with the research, with the accelerator. I mean, we have the whole package, and uh, Fresno State is right in the center of this, and uh, it's very it's exciting for our region. Yeah, I think the really cool part about the value that Fresno State adds to the area is that you need that central spot where it's bringing together all the people who are doing the research, who are involved with policy or supporting entrepreneurs. And by having Fresno State in this area, it's serving as that catalyst and support system. I mean, I just think it's really cool that people have ideas out there and yes, you can come here and with the Wet Center, with Valley Ventures, we'll support it so that we can make a difference in our community on a really large scale. 
Yes, and I think you mentioned it's not only higher education, but it's also there's a huge interest in connecting with industry, both with existing industry, but also with new businesses. And I think Bristol State are really a, a good partner for those entities to create something bigger that's helpful to the whole, yeah. the whole region. Yeah, I love that it's it's tangible research. It's not about esoteric ideas. It's something that we have an issue here that we need to solve where we are the breadbasket of the country. We are facing water issues. We're facing energy issues. How do we fix those and how do we support the companies that are? And it's cool that it's all coming together. And with Valley Ventures, so you're going into cohort three coming up so people can still apply to be part of that program. And you are seeing incredible success rates. Tell us a couple more of the cool businesses like the crickets and sure. the, the drone up in the sky for 30 weeks yeah well you know most of these most of these companies that are at a broad level uh, just i'll just kind of go over some general stats of the, of the program so uh, we've taken about 25 companies to the to the program since the previous two cohorts um, their sales have grown dramatically we're still collecting data on that uh, but we've seen everything from again the first hundred thousand dollars worth of sales of the program uh, over the three-month period I've seen other companies that already came in with some higher level of sales increase their uh, month over month revenue growth rate from you know five percent to fifteen percent. Um, so those are, those are all good stats. Uh, our our cohort or total group represents about I believe about three point four million dollars in sales. Um, they've raised a, about nine million dollars in venture funding and about three million dollars from grants and loans and other things like that. So um, we have a pretty strong uh, group of companies. And uh, maybe if I can just kind of bridge it to uh, Fresno State and how it impacts is, as these companies have, Grogur is a great example of this, is um, as these companies make sales and they grow their team, um, Grogur brought on a Fresno State student full-time um, after his graduation to kind of help with that process and their growth. And as, as these companies kind of come through, they grow their sales, uh, not only do they want to be part of Valley Ventures, but they want to be part of Fresno State. So having their technologies at the farm, um, a lot of them ask us about, hey, how do we get interns involved with our business to help us with what we're doing? And then when it comes time, a lot of them are saying, hey, we've got a, we've got a job uh, that we need filled and let's, let's turn to a Fresno State student. They, they really have a high respect for the students here and, and, the, and the value and the uh, quality that Fresno State turns out. So um, I think that the, the synergy of Valley Ventures with Fresno State is, is not only something that makes sense from our end, but it's something companies want to see. Yeah. So it's a it's exciting to see that that partnership and uh, the fact that the companies value both both sides just as much. So right, and it's cool that we're also a resource for those students and the local students who want to get involved with agriculture and water and energy. That if you want to learn about those things, this is the cutting edge place to do it. That research is happening here. We're at the forefront of what's going to be for the future. So that's a great thing to offer our students as well. But then go on to work for those businesses that need those people who are trained in those things. So the cycle is really complete in that way. And I also want to touch on, there were just a couple minutes left, we have a new Associate Vice President of Water. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that we're unifying all of these different efforts on campus. Definitely, um, really to bring Fresno State to be the water campus. And that takes, of course, a, a, a effort that is that will go through all the colleges so we have the water core for example that has uh, faculty to the, uh, of the colleges and they do a number of activities um, that will all you know, just bring water on the forefront of all students no matter what college you're under so i think just bringing that awareness just among our student population and then taking it outside the campus as well but really strengthening anything from research to education and policy in around water, I think is, is key, and that is what uh, the new AUP is going to be yeah. working on. Yeah, there's a lot of exciting things happening on campus, so to see it all kind of being unified and brought together is pretty exciting there. Uh, tell us real quick, if people want to apply for Valley Ventures or find out more about uh, Blue Tech Valley, what is the website? The website is bluetechvalley.org and valleyventures.org, and they also think so you can find both of them on both sites. Uh, that will give them easy access to I'm interested or I want to apply and that will then get in our in our inbox and we'll reach out for sure and make sure that we start the conversation. We also have a couple of events this fall where we will showcase a lot of what we're doing. We have an ag tech day and then we have the forum which is more of an entrepreneur uh, focus with uh, some great pitches from companies and a showcase as well where you can um, 
consume new technology. And so, it's happened every year. Every year, yes. And there's more information on that as well on the website. Great. And final thoughts for anybody who wants to apply for Valley Ventures. I, I don't think there's any reason why you shouldn't apply. I mean, at the very least, um, if, if it's not the Valley Ventures program, we're going to plug you in with something. We never we never let a company that applies uh, walk away without some kind of resource in their in their pocket helping them with what they need. Um, and then, uh, you know, the Valley Ventures program, just shoot me an email. Uh, or just apply online and we'll have a conversation and, and talk about how Valley Ventures can help grow your company. Because at the end of the day, um, you know, we want to we want to make sure that not only uh, the companies you know, fit what we're doing, but we want to make sure we're providing the full value to them as well. So um, I wouldn't hesitate to apply. Uh, more information if you have ideas or if you want to see what's going on or you know other students who are interested share that out we're hoping to also do a webinar in the future with the new associate vice president for water so we'll talk more about that so watch out for all that exciting stuff coming on and again Pella and Benjamin thanks so much for joining us thank you thank you all right have a great day everybody we'll see you next time